I'd like to invite you to do an experiment with me today on YouTube. For the next few moments, I'd like you to play this YouTube video at a playback speed of 50%. Or you have no idea what I'm talking about. We'll be testing YouTube today. Informational age, where technically anyone could publish information and content online. Of course, we have all sorts of platforms for doing this. We have social media, we have platforms like YouTube, where anyone can easily, without barriers, put out information online. And this is really a far cry and a departure from where media used to be very much restricted, very much controlled by people in the editorial process, and only those that were worthy could actually get some exposure. But today, technically anyone could do it. At the same time, the implication is that such a landscape would be very chaotic. How do we actually determine what information is worthy of actually being broadcasted and published and what isn't? How do we determine those that are valuable and those that are frivolous? We are told by the technologists and the people behind such platforms that we have these algorithms in place of these humans that are actually helping us determine this very question. And only those are worthy of being delivered will be delivered. And as far as YouTube is concerned for today's experiment, we are only recommended and shown YouTube videos that are worthy of being shown based on the algorithm and its metrics. Yet, in spite of that, I've also had many interesting experiences where I've been on the YouTube homepage and I've been recommended videos that are a bit strange and yet they're there and it makes me wonder whether there's something wrong with the system. Officially, YouTube's algorithm looks at really a few metrics, the view, the click-through rate, the retention rate, and the watch time. And if you were to think about it logically, if these metrics are good, then certainly videos should be quite valuable to watch. Only if that video is that good, would they generate these good metrics? Yet, because what is being determined as where the information is really based on these metrics and these metrics alone, then it also really gives way to it potentially being avertently or inadvertently gained. So recently I watched this very interesting experiment being conducted by this YouTuber where he hypothesized that if we could actually slow down the playtime of videos, then potentially we could increase the retention rate. So today, by watching this video playback speed at this very moment, the retention rate of this video is actually up than its usual retention rate. In other words, the system is now being told that this video is worthy of being promoted. So for the purposes of our experiment today, if this video has more views than my usual videos over the next few days, then this experiment would have been proven successful, which goes to suggest that the metric and really the overall system that we have in place to help us determine our information diet on YouTube is itself flawed. And this raises greater implications really, because of course, besides YouTube, many platforms have similar metrics for their own algorithms. And so it really shows us that we live in an age where we can't fully rely on these systems to help us determine what is good information. There really still needs to be a human component in really helping us navigate the information landscape of today and really help us build practical and valuable knowledge.